Hi there. Welcome to MCDB 427 Molecular Biology Online Mini Course at the University of Michigan. My name is Yu Wei. Today we're going to talk about RNA helicase activity of EIF4A. So, what is EIF4A? E stands for eukaryote. IF stands for initiation factor. Therefore, EIF4A stands for eukaryotic initiation factor for A. It is part of the cap binding protein complex, which is also called EIF4F. EIF4F composes of four subunits: EIF4A, 4B, 4E, and 4G. Each subunit has its own functions. For example, EIF4E has cap binding activity. EIF4G can stabilize cap binding. EIF3 and poly A tail binding protein. In terms of EIF4A, it has RNA helicase activity with the help of EIF4B, and this activity requires ATP. So, how do we know that EIF4A has this helicase activity? Let's look at the experiment performed by Pauls and Sonnenberg in 1992. This experiment is described in Figure 17.21 in the book Molecular Biology, Fifth Edition, written by Weaver. The setup of the experiment is that authors manufactured two single-stranded, 30 nucleotide long, 32 phosphorylated RNA with 10 base pair complementary sequences at the five prime end of each. Therefore, two single-stranded RNA can anneal to each other at the 10 base pair complementary region and form duplex. These substrates were first placed in different temperature environment. More specifically, 37 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Celsius. Later on, in different sub-experiments, 0 or 0.5 or 1 or 2 micrograms of EIF4A was added. 0 or 0.3 micrograms of EIF4B was then added, and 0 or 1 millimolar molar of ATP was added. Each mixture was then separated on SCS 15% polyacrylamide gel. And visualized under autoradiography. So, what do we find from these experiments? This is the result from the experiments. Let's first look at lane one and lane two. Lane one has substrates only under 37 degrees Celsius, and lane two has substrates only under 90 degrees Celsius. We could see that the high temperature denatures the partially double-stranded duplex and forms two monomers of the same length. That is why there is only one band here and one band here. These two bands also serve as a reference, as where the duplex and the monomers locate on the gel, which can be useful for later result analysis. Now, all the rest of the experiments were done at 37 degrees Celsius. Let's look at lane five, six, and seven. All these three lines have the same amount of ATP and EIF4B, but different amounts of EIF4A. The gel shows us that when there is an increasing amount of EIF4A in the mixture, there are more monomers and fewer duplexes. This indicates that this combination, ATP plus EIF4A plus EIF4B, has RNA helicase activity because they could unwind the duplex and form monomers, and this activity is dependent on the amount of EIF4A. So it seems that EIF4A plays an important role in unwinding RNA. Is ATP or EIF4B necessary in this activity as well? Let's look at lane four. Comparing lane four with lane five, the only difference is that lane four does not have ATP, and we don't see a band on the monomer location. This indicates that this helicase needs ATP. How about EIF4B? Let's compare lane eight and lane five. The only difference is that lane eight does not have EIF4A, while lane five does. And we don't see a band on the monomer position, which means EIF4B alone, even at the presence of ATP, does not have helicase activity. Does it mean EIF4A alone with ATP is enough to perform helicase activity? Let's look at lane three and lane five. The difference between these two lanes is the presence or absence of EIF4B. Without EIF4B, we could still see a faint band at the monomer position. This indicates that EIF4A along with ATP could unwind RNA. However, with the help of EIF4B at lane five, we see a lot darker band, which means more duplexes were unwound. Therefore, EIF4A was has helicase activity at the presence of ATP, and this activity is enhanced by EIF4B. 
What are the overall conclusions we can drive from these experiments? Firstly, EIF4A has RNA helicase activities. It can therefore unwind the hairpins that are frequently found in the five prime leaders of eukaryotic mRNAs. Secondly, this activity requires ATP. Lastly, the EIF4A helicase activity is enhanced by EIF4B. That's all I have for Figure 17.21. Hope it helps. Thanks for watching and go blue.